CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X ray 9, X ray rover, Kilo X ray 9, X ray rover, Echo Nancy 2030, Gridline QOZ. Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X. Welcome to my video series on getting started in amateur radio satellites. You might have seen some of my satellite articles in QST Magazine and on the DX Engineering blog on all bands. DX Engineering came to me and asked if I'd be interested in doing a video series on getting started in the satellites, and I thought that was a good idea. Over the course of this video series, I'll go over the basic concepts of how satellites function, different types of satellites, what gear is needed, and lots of operating tips and tricks to help you maximize your success. Most of all, I hope to show you just how much fun satellite operating can be. Satellite operating has several advantages. First, all current license classes can use them. Whether you're a technician class licensee taking your first steps in amateur radio, or you're a seasoned HF operator looking for new challenges, satellite operating is a very satisfying part of our hobby. Second, it's exceptionally portable. You can access some of the satellites using little more than a dual band HT and a handheld Yagi antenna. This makes it easy to take ham radio with you on your next vacation or business trip. If you live in an antenna-restricted neighborhood, the portability of satellite gear gives you an excellent way to get on the air and enjoy the hobby that you love. Third, satellites aren't subject to poor propagation conditions that the HF and the VHF bands are. Satellite passes will always occur, and they're predictable days or weeks in advance. This makes it easy to get in some ham radio time around your work or family schedule. Voice satellites have two types, FM and linear. FM satellites function like an orbiting repeater. Only one person can access the satellite at a time. Linear satellites have a transponder on board, and that transponder provides between 20 and 60 kilohertz of bandwidth that you can tune across, just like you would tune across an HF band. Linear satellites permit sideband and CW contacts and allow multiple contacts to occur at the same time, just like on HF. Ham radio satellites fly overhead in what is known as low Earth orbit, or LEO. LEO satellites orbit around 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Because they are low orbit, they pass overhead relatively quickly. They're moving about 17,000 miles an hour, and an average pass takes between 15 and 20 minutes between horizon to horizon. When a satellite pops up at the beginning of a pass, that's known as AOS, or acquisition of signal. When the satellite drops down the horizon at the end of a pass, that's known as LOS, or loss of signal. Satellites are dual band, with most using a combination of 2 meters and 70 centimeters. When using a satellite, you transmit or uplink to the satellite on one band, and receive or downlink from the satellite on the other band. Every satellite has a footprint, which is the area of coverage of the satellite. Stations that are within the footprint can communicate with each other. Because the satellite is moving, however, stations will go in and out of the satellite's footprint as a pass progresses. Don't let the fact that the satellites operate on the VHF UHF bands fool you. You will have opportunity to make contacts across the country and even opportunities for some DX contacts as well. From the continental United States, making a contact with all 50 states is possible from about 85% of the country. And many DX countries in Central and South America, the Caribbean, and even Europe and Asia can be worked via satellite. A few stations have even completed their DXCC award on low Earth orbit satellites. DXpeditions sometimes take satellite gear with them as well. Here's a recording of me working the K1N Navassa Island de-expedition in 2015 via satellite. Kilo 1 November, Kilo 1 November, Kilo 1 November. Kilo 1 X-ray, 9 X-ray. Kilo 1 November. Kilo 1 X-ray, 9 X-ray. 9 X-ray, 9 X-ray, 5 9. Kilo 1 X-ray, 9 X-ray, 5 9. Thank you. Kilo 1 November. 
As you can see, working on the ham radio satellites offers a lot of fun and challenges for hams of all levels and abilities. In the next video, we'll show you how to get started on the FM satellites and go over some of the gear needed and operating tips to get started properly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. 73.